those pity pat punches aren't going to do much for anybody. Ali gave away about three rounds because he had that pitta patta style and then motioning to the audience that he didn't hurt me, et cetera, et cetera. Ali will score no knockout in this round. I'm giving him hell because he's playing with the guy, patting him and everything else. I, I told him, man, come on now, get it together. Through eight rounds, the official scorecards had Frazier ahead, but not everyone agreed. Going into the ninth round, it was even. But the ninth round, I would put on a dazzling show. And Muhammad Ali comes back. He's got a great reserve. Suddenly, Ali found his second win, and you thought, my God, he's doing it again. Frazier was hurt there. Here he comes. Muhammad Ali saves the round. It had ebbs and flows to the action. It was Ali. It was Fraser. It was Ali. It was Fraser. It was Ali. It was Fraser. I mean, that's what made it. Ali would win both the ninth and tenth rounds, but Joe refused to be denied. He said it to me a lot of times. Hey, man, I'm prepared to die in there because he felt his whole life, his family, all of what he stood for was on the line. Joe trying to get that shot in there. Ali, Muhammad talks to him again. He said, don't you know I'm God? I said, God, you're in the wrong place tonight. I'm taking that and kicking ass. In the 11th round, Joe Frazier's anger exploded. Had Ali in trouble. Muhammad Ali rocks him to the ropes. He almost went down. For some reason, Joe did not follow up on it. Frazier wondered if Ali was playing possum, if Ali was faking the wobbling walk to draw him in. Joe remained cautious. The walking was too slow, but Dow was trained that you always got to remember a man is dangerous when he hurt. really hurt. And that was from that plate around the corner. You know, the rope of dope, that was a little bit of the rope of dope, but he was a dope, so he got nailed. Frazier really clobbered him with everything in the book. I said, what's wrong with this guy? What's holding him up? At that point, you had the feeling that this fight was Frazier's period and a paragraph. That was it. Then, miraculously, Ali comes back. those punches, and they've got to be hurting Joe. Best fight I've ever seen, perhaps be the best fight I'll ever see, and I better cherish this. Fifteen and final round. Entering the final round, Frazier was well ahead on the official scorecards, but he did not know that. He was still looking to land that big left hook. Close to exhaustion, and Frazier unfurls this left hook. Hey, yeah! Boom! It was bam, then boom. It was a thing of beauty. <laughs> Short and hard and accurate. Maybe it was a little doubt in my mind whether I got the decision or not. But when I dust him off, I mean, I was the most happiest guy in the world. The left hook that took down Muhammad Ali in that 15th round was Joe Frazier's revenge. He had persevered. This was Joe Frazier's defining moment. No one will ever forget what he and Muhammad Ali gave to the world on March 8th 1971. 
win the greatest victory of his career, of anybody's career. He made up his mind that I'm going to do whatever I can to get Muhammad Ali, even if I die. And that's what did it. So here we are in Madison Square Garden. The people are still standing around. Nobody seems to want to go home. I think everybody has been treated to one of the greatest fighting evenings they've ever seen. It was the most eagerly anticipated, closely watched event of my lifetime. These were two of the greatest fighters of all time, and they went at it for 15 rounds. The fight itself, viewed in a vacuum, was extraordinary. In the aftermath of an event that had touched so many, Jerry Parencio went to console the loser. He had no more left the ring than I headed down there too. He was sitting there, still had his trunks on him, and there was this young black woman who was on the floor, and she had her arms around his calf. She was just crying, and you, you can see that she was emotionally uh, very, very upset. He took this woman's head and gently turned her around. He said, Diana, he said, say hello to the man that gave me two and a half million dollars to get my ass whooped. And it was Diana Ross. Mohammed is the greatest fighter that ever lived. He should be put down in history. Well, no, he's just a rope bender. All he was no, lay up against the rope like nothing. he was in a cradle. No, Joe, you're not I'm saying nothing. about a fighter. Joe ah, Fraser's a fighter. People didn't leave the arena, I got to tell you, for 40, 50 minutes. They were still standing there going, wow, what a night, you know, what an ending, what a finish, you know. Now a report from Bill Walker at Madison Square Garden. Frazier emerged from the fight the undisputed champion, but he was a weary, battered victor after 15 punishing rounds. I want him to come to me and apologize for all the things he called me. Ali was not around for that apology. The man who said he could not be beaten didn't appear at the post-fight news conference. Doctors at a New York hospital were examining Ali's severely bruised jaw. The next day, Ali met with reporters. How's your jaw? Yeah, just so I just I don't have a mark on me. If you see, I don't have one scratch. I mean, nothing happened to me. All I have is this bruised uh, jaw here. Well, if you looked at the fight, of course Ali had a swollen jaw, but Frazier had taken some tremendous punches, and his face was swollen. Well, I talked to him a couple times. You know, he's a big man. Any big man can hit. The rumor was he's dead. He died in the hospital. I got a call from Bud Schuberg, and Bud said, Gene, I just heard that Joe Frazier died. I said, oh my God, Ali, Bud Schuberg said Joe Frazier died. And Ali said, if he did, I'll never fight again. Joe Frazier was admitted to the Jufre Pavilion of St. Luke's Hospital this afternoon, suffering from extreme fatigue and high blood pressure. I went over to the hospital. It was, uh... It was very sad to go there. There was nobody there at all. And he was very close to death. Certainly didn't want Ali's camp to know that he had taken such a beating. Dr. James Dufre, the medical director of St. Luke's, says Frazier's present condition is not related to that fight. I just thought there's a lot of people that made a lot of money out of this thing. Now it's over, he won, and uh, everybody was taking care of themselves. Frazier's blood pressure returned to normal and he left the hospital a week later. Most of those who cheered Joe were relieved. Others had already moved on. All those right-wingers and all those hard hats who were cheering the Vietnam War, who claimed to love Joe Frazier on March 8, 71, really didn't have much use for Joe Frazier on March 9, 71, aside from the fact that Joe might be able to whoop Ali's ass, and that they wanted. That's unfortunate. But the memory of the fight has endured. This was more than a boxing match. It meant so much to a lot of people. I cried my eyes out, I'm sure most people did. You were so certain that you were right to support Ali, that you were right to oppose the war, that the cause of civil rights was just. And when he lost, it was almost like, it can't be. I can't be on the wrong side of those things. I just can't be. You had the sense that the bad guys won. The wrong people won this fight. And, and what they represented had triumphed in the ring. But we knew that what they had represented was losing all over the country. The Supreme Court today overturned the draft of Asian conviction of former heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali. And as Ali's image and myth and name and reputation grew, 
Joe's was sure to suffer. The winner that night was the loser. The loser that night was the winner. The animosity the two fighters had toward each other never left. Ali continued to taunt Frazier, who continued to despise Ali. And to add insult to injury, Joe would lose both the rematch at the Garden and the Thriller in Manila. As the years have passed for Joe, apparently time has not healed all the wounds. And ironically, he and Muhammad Ali have traded places in the war of words. And years, many years later, unfortunately, when, when Ali has Parkinson's syndrome and uh, is, is glazed and quivering, Frazier then says something really mean-spirited. Well, now you know who won those fights. Look at him today, look at me. I'm the one that's supposed to be dumb, duh, 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 but who's talking like that, you know? That all comes back from that Uncle Tom comment before the 1971 fight, and he's still carrying that hurt. I, I swallow a lot of razor blade, and sometimes they cut inside, you know? I would get wrong boxes and say some of the things that I shouldn't say. I've always thought that they brought out the best in each other in the ring and the worst in each other outside the ring. I want to, like, throw the towel in. And I'm willing to, like, you know, uh, say to Muhammad, you heard that? And let's say all the fans, all his family, if I've done anything wrong to him, Hey, man, forgive me. Like all the epic rivals in sports, Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali each needed the other to bring out the best in himself. And on that night of March 8, 1971, in the crucible of a tumultuous era, Ali emerged as the world's most recognizable personality. But it was Joe Frazier who had put him center stage. Two gladiators for the ages turned America into one nation divisible with Ali and Frazier for all.